I got a stable there. Today we're going to be talking about commander upgrade strategy. It's going to be a mostly advanced strategy. We will start off kind of with the basic ideas um, when it comes to how we want to view commander upgrades, but most of it's going to be talking about kind of mid to late game uh, in terms of your commander development. That's where I am at here. I've been playing since the game launched, and so I've naturally accumulated a lot of commander resources, and that leads me to have a very high level navy. So my strategy is going to drastically differ than yours. Um, where you are in the game is going to dictate how you want to be thinking about it, but the overall approach um, is valuable to understand. I think we're basically going to be taking an economic approach to commander upgrades and trying to decide how can we do the best good for the Navy as a whole? We want to view the Navy as a whole when we're uh, delving out these commander resources. So that's the approach I would recommend. That's going to give you the best results in terms of efficiency. Commander upgrades, very slow. Now what we're looking at here is about two and a half years into this. And by the way, I do get uh, some, like lately the commanders we've been getting as community contributors have been coming to us at level 10. All right, so I got Beeply. I haven't touched this one. This is how it arrives. Level 10, Legendary 1. Okay, the older ones, uh, I think I put these into them. But you're going to be starting off the game with the Deweys, Level 1. And then each week, how we get the commanders themselves, we go over here to the Campaigns uh, tab, Weekly Boost. You complete the missions here. Hopefully it doesn't take you too long. And then you get a Commander Crate each week. Okay, you open the commander crate, you'll get a new crate. Not going to get any duplicates until you've gotten all the base commanders, which are the actual dudes that have lived. So there's been no Victor Einstein that we know of, but there was a dude named Norm Scott. Okay, if they were in World War II and someone knows their name, then they're probably, <laughs> then they're an actual commander. That's all you want to look at it. All these other guys are event commanders, okay? So um, you get... One per week, you're not going to get any duplicates until you unlock them all. And then once you've unlocked them all, then you begin to getting duplicates. So let's say I get a copy of Norm Scott. What happens for me? I get, you see that number seven. That's the amount of personal accommodations he gets. If I got a Norm Scott on my commander crate this week, that number would go up to eight. Once that gets to 15, then I can make him legendary level four. Okay. So those are the accommodations. That's how you get accommodations by getting duplicate commanders, or you can get the blue commendations. I'm gonna explain a method to you to produce them with your own Navy, or you get them with the commander or the campaigns or whatever else, their rewards from time to time, but primarily through the campaign. So how we're gonna level up our guys to start with? Well, we got a level one Dewey, all right? And then we get our first commander. Let's say we open the first commander crate and it's we'll do something random we get uh carl von Mueller, okay german cruiser commander well for that week then my challenge for myself is going to be let's explore the german cruiser so let's play him for a week we got von Mueller. we should have 30 promotion orders for the week when we do all the missions and we're going to put 30 promotion orders into von Mueller. that'll bring him up to level five level six whatever it is and that's how far we're going to take him then next week, uh, the Commander Crate comes off, and it's blah, 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 blah. Okay, this time we get uh, Bob Jojo. All right, French Battleship Commander. Well, this week we're going to play the French Battleships. We'll put the promotion orders in him, and that'll give you the experience. That'll give you a little bit of uh, building on your Commander levels, but we're not going haywire. Okay, we're not saying, ah, well, Demet or regular Dewey. I love the stash. I'm going to make him level 16 uh, everyone who does that regrets it later, okay? So don't do that. Resist the temptation. Take it slow. My advice, there's key levels when we're leveling up, guys. We'll show you here. All right, first level. Uh, these first levels, they... What we want to be looking at are these circles in the middle. You see how they light up as we level them up? Uh, you get some boost here, but the first significant level in the game is level 7. Why is that? Well, we get the first inspiration slot unlocked. You can see over here, locked. Okay, we get them up to, if I put the points in here, brought them up to seven. Now it's unlocked, okay? So the first goal for you should be to, number one, identify what you want to do with this game. Do I want to play every ship line in the game? If so, that's going to dictate your strategy. If I only want to play American battleships, then all I need is one American battleship commander and two good battleship inspirations. 
going to put all the points into those guys and that's all I ever need. We're never going to spend any other promotion orders on anything else. Okay, but if you're like me, you want to play every line in the game, we need an American cruiser line commander. Actually, we need an American heavy cruiser, American light cruiser. We don't need it, but we would ideally like that. But we need a cruiser commander, destroyer commander, battleship commander, and carrier if you want to play carriers. Japanese, well, we need destroyers, blah, blah, blah. So we need a lot of commanders up and running, okay? So we're going to passively be getting these commanders. And then you want to take the time to say to yourself, okay, do I like Makawa or Yamamoto better? All right, now my personal recommendation for the Japanese cruisers, go Makawa. It's good inspiration, of course, but it's a good build for the Japanese cruisers. Yamamoto, I got a lot of points in him because I like his inspiration. Enhance the AP pen on your cruiser shells. Well, I got that on about five cruiser lines right now. So both of these guys are valuable to me. But early on, if I have Yamamoto, I have Makawa, I got to make a decision. Which one should I focus on, okay? Remember when we're looking at my screens here, this is two and a half years of upgrades, okay? Early on, I'd put all my points into Makawa. Liked his inspiration. And we only leveled up... Yamamoto later when we had the luxury to focus more on inspirations. So level seven, the first level, take up your navy, take your commanders that are actually going to be sitting in your ship's pilot seats. Okay. Let's say we're going to use Tanaka on our Japanese destroyer players or Japanese destroyers. Let's get them up to level seven. Let's get everyone that we're actually using out there up to level seven. Then the next significant level, level 11. Okay. And you might, might want to make a pit stop in the way. Let's bring them all up to levels 8 or 10, whatever it is. But level 11 is the next significant number. Why is that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Because from going to the level 10 to level 11, now we get an extra inspiration. And that perk 1 slot becomes maxed. Assuming you got legendary level 1, which all you need is one duplicate. Relatively easy to do. Um, then you have a max level 1, which is powerful. And you have two inspirations, which is as much of an increase in your inspiration power as you can possibly get. So the biggest impact you're ever going to have on your commander upgrade is from going from level 10 to level 11. That's the most powerful upgrade. So you would ideally want to bring every one of your actively used commanders, again, my American cruiser line, my battleship commander, everyone that I'm actually playing, let's get them all up to level 11, okay? So that should be your first early game strategy and by early put the air quotes around that because that's about a year year and a half okay that takes a long time to get there but that's what you should be focusing on what do we want to focus on in terms of upgrade priorities look for opportunities where the commander is being used on your line yes but it also has an inspiration that i like to use often so that's why we got cunningham was my first commander that we went hard on we're going to talk about him a couple times in this video but I was using him as my British battleship commander. And base trait, I loved it early on. I had it on every single battleship build in the game. Okay, so if I'm going to put more points into one guy, it's going to be him. All right, even if I like, let's say I like American battleships just a bit more than British battleships. But I like playing them both. And Cunningham is an inspiration on all my battleships. Well, then the value of raising Cunningham is better for my Navy than even boosting Sims or Lee, whoever I want to use over here. Because even though I might enjoy playing the Americans more and I might actually play those ships a little bit more, I'm using Cunningham as an inspiration for Sims. And I still play the British battleships a fair amount, so I'm getting good value. So we want to be viewing the Navy as a whole. What do I like to do with this game? How do I like to play it? What is going to have the biggest impact on my enjoyment? Okay, so... The more spread out your interests lie, the more of the game you're into, you want to play every single line, then it gets complicated. That's when the strategy gets complicated. We got to focus on dual purpose first and foremost. Who's an active commander and an inspiration? Once you got those guys boosted to appropriate levels, then you go to just the ship commanders. Frazier, not inspiring any of my guys. He might be inspiring one build, but not in general that valuable of an inspiration for me. But he is the commander of one of my British cruiser lines. So he's got mid-tier value, low-tier value, uh, someone who would just be used as an inspiration. Now, I got this guy Max, so you might, what you're visually seeing counters my point, but Von Hipper. All right, I chose to go with Ciliax and Hyde as my two German battleship commanders. This guy's just a pure inspiration, but I'm so 
wedded to the idea of getting a max uh, secondary build in play from time to time that we just put the points into him. Okay, but in terms of actual value, he's less valuable than the commander who pilots the line, and that guy's Ciliax would be a good example. He pilots a German line, but he doesn't inspire any other lines currently for me. And then God Tier Bay. He's the pilot of my German destroyers, and he inspires every destroyer, I believe, more almost every destroyer except for the Soviets in my fleet. So by low priority, pure inspirations, mid priority, uh, commanders of an actual line, dudes whose ass is in the seat, and then guy who is actually piloting this ship and inspires other dudes. They think about them all day. They can't get enough of Bay. <laughs> they think about them. So that's the value. That's how you want to be viewing your upgrade priorities. Uh, so once we've gotten from level 7, then we go to level 11. Now, mid-game, we're getting in the mid-game. We're going from getting all these guys up to level 12 and eventually level 14. You can see where I'm at right now, and you can see who up to this point I value. Because basically my floor of everyone that I'm actively leveling, they're all up to 14 now. I got some guys who are, you know, more highly promoted than that. Uh, but generally, anyone who I'm actively using or have actively used in the past, they're up to level 14, okay? There's a few uh, guys laying around like Lemon, uh, potentially this Crash B. I mean, don't look at this and exclude the ones that I haven't leveled yet as being completely worthless. But in general, the guys that I want are level 14. And then, who do we, bo who do we boost to level 16? Well, the main ones you want to boost if you're a Battleship Commander are the defensive battleship commanders, the guys that have the heals. Going from level 14 to level 16, which is how you get the uh, slot 4 maxed here. Then you get the extra heal. Okay, so that's worth going from level 14 to level 16. If I'm still running Bill Halsey on American Destroyers and I get 2% longer smoke deployment time, not worth it. Because what are we talking about when we're talking about going from level 14 to 16? Um, we're talking about... Uh, we need two insignias there, which is a dead level that actually does nothing. And then seven to go from level 14 to 16. Huge investment. And when I say it's dead, we still get a little bit of base straight here. Uh, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But in general, level 15 is more or less a worthless level. So that's how we want to be viewing this from an economic analysis standpoint. Uh, so... Why am I stopping on level 14? What's the significance of that? That's when the insignias come in play, okay? Uh, we'll find a lower level guy. So up until level 12, promotion orders. 13, promotion orders. 14, now we got one insignia, and that's the end of the promotion orders. From here on out, it's just uh, insignias and then commendations, of course, once you get down to legendary. So up to, four, up to level 13, it's purely promotion orders. And 13 is another dead level. Okay, nothing is happening on the right-hand side of this build. Just a little bit of base trade increase. Generally not worth uh, 50 promotion orders and 80,000 blue stars to get just a little base trade. Unless the base trade's really valuable and it inspires a lot of ships. Sometimes that move would be worth it, but in general, you're going to directly promote from level 12 to level 14. That's when your uh, slot 3 perk goes from level 2 to level 3. And you get a double boost of the base trade now by going up two levels. So now we're committing one common or one insignia to get everyone to level 14. But what happens if I want to go from uh, we talked about this a moment ago, going from here to here, which once again is a dead level, 14 to 15. We're taking two more insignias. So let's say we wanted to level everyone up to level 15 for some reason. That's three insignias per commander as opposed to one insignia per commander. And then to get it maxed, eight altogether, okay? That's why we're not taking one dude up to eight and leaving everyone else to rot. We could get this guy up to level 14 and seven other dudes up to level 14 because we have all those extra insignias laying around. So this is how we want to be viewing it. Again, viewing the Navy and your commander resources as one whole. What part of the game I'm actually engaging with? If it's the whole thing, then you need to focus on every line. If it's just battleships, just destroyers, then you just need to focus on the parts of the commander system that affect you. Um, but whatever it is, you want to view that because you know your whole thing is getting every ship you can play is getting better simultaneously 
as opposed to just one line very slowly getting marginally better. Okay, so I'd rather get everyone up to level 14 uh, than one dude up to level 16, one dude up to level 16. Everyone else is left at level 12 or whatever. That's just how you want to be viewing this, okay? So that's pretty much it for the promotion order side of things. Once again, only consider maxing. I guess we didn't quite touch on the final point, which is the other time we want to take them up to 16 is, and this applies mainly when we're really deep into this, but uh, guys that are inspirations like Will Sims, Billy Sims, uh, we promoted him to 16 the other day because I've put him on every destroyer build in my Navy currently. So massively valuable. He is the commander for the majority of my uh, American battleships as well. So it affects most of my American battleship builds by promoting them and all the destroyer builds currently. Hugely valuable. So we're okay with taking those extra commendations, or I'm sorry, the extra insignias away from other guys that haven't yet gotten promoted to level 14, which... You can see, once again, I got maybe three or four left that I really am eyeing to get that level currently. So that's the analysis, but that's kind of it for the promotion order side of things. How about the legendary, the commendation side of things? Now, this is a different system. Um, it, it, the same underlying principles apply, like to get, uh, let's find a good... All right, so here's one that hasn't been legendary yet. So to get to legendary level one, one commendation, of course. Uh, to get it up to level two, we need three more on top of that for a total of four. To get it up to level three, we need seven more with, for a total of 11. And to get it maxed, it's a total of 25. I do believe. Let's double check that. I think it's 15 more. <coughs> so that's significant. That's a lot of resources, but you want to be applying the same analysis. Can I get uh, seven guys up to legendary level one? and Or do I want to put this girl up here, Grashby, take her to legendary level three by putting seven uh, accommodations into them? Both of them are possible with my current uh, allocation of eight accommodations. I could do either, but I'd rather get eight or seven commanders up to legendary level one than the one up to level three and the rest of them still at legendary level zero you understand what i'm saying so do level them up evenly you're going to have the biggest impact on your navy that way um that's a key concept of it but how do we get the commendations this part is a little bit different and this is affecting my current thinking because now i'm i'm at the point in the game now where promotion orders I'm still able to spend them. I'm hoarding them at the moment because we got an update coming out with new commanders potentially next uh, week. So I got some extra, but I could still spend promotion orders on new experimental builds, of course. But the insignias and the commendations are the slowdown. How do we get the commendations? We talked about it earlier, primarily through duplicates, but we can also create them. And how do we create them? Well, if you have a guy that's maxed, and I currently have two of them, we started off with Cunningham, maxed him. And then we actually max Bay either, or shortly there, not shortly thereafter, about six to 12 months after that. Cunningham, I've had max for quite a while. Bay, we did recently as I'm beginning to implement the final stage of my plan, which I will get to shortly here. But how we can create uh, accommodations with these guys, you go to the commander's section, go here, we go over to Cunningham. If I had 900 blue stars, I only got 300, so I can't demonstrate, but I would click on them purchase and then when we purchased him rather than him being added to the inventory because he's already maxed he creates a blue commendation if you get a duplicate commander of a guy that's fully maxed you get a blue commendation and that goes into my inventory i actually did that earlier tonight i went from one point uh two or three million blue stars down to 350 but i got an extra commendation from seven to eight and why you'd want to really be doing that well the commendations are nice you'll get them through the campaigns generally um, and you want to be primarily using them to promote your commanders that are actually piloting your ships so let's say you're using norm scott on your cruisers put them into him but when they become essential is when you have event commanders so this kind of portion of the strategy if you don't ever get event commanders uh then you're not going to need to think about the game this way but i think you can get some event commanders for free just by doing free-to-play missions from time to time. So if you get them, let's say I get uh, Kong here, 
well, how am I going to legendary level him up? Because he's, I'm never going to get him out of a crate. He's not in the commander crates. So in order to do them, I have to spend the blue accommodations. You can use zero gold accommodations that will never go up um, unless they re-release the con crates for whatever reason. But if I want to level up his legendary, I got to spend the blue accommodations. And those ones, uh, the gold ones are kind of free. You get them purely by getting duplicates. The blue ones are more actual money. Like, you get them from buying campaigns, or you can buy them from the store. And those, that makes that more valuable. So to level Kong up actually costs me, personally, money, unless I can generate these, uh, these commendations uh, just by playing the game. And I can do that by earning blue stars, and then buying copies of Cunningham. And then I can generate enough blue commendations. You can see I got plenty. If I wanted to bring Hot Rod up to... Legendary level two, then I can use three of my eight blue commendations. So that's the value of those. And by getting a guy up to max here, now I have like I used to call it a portal. Now I'd call it more of a generator, a background economic tool that will passively create these. How does that do that? Well, I'm gonna. I think there's about 50 commanders in the game, actual, real human commanders, not Azure Lane or uh, robots or anything like that. But the guys that you're gonna get in commander crates, I think there's about 50 of them. And that means we're going to get roughly one duplicate Commander Cunningham per year. I think in actuality over the last year, I probably got three or four just by the luck of the draw. But statistically, we'd expect to get one per year. Now, if I'm max bay, now we double that shot, right? 100% increase in the production. And we cut down our expected generation of blue accommodations by uh, 50%. So we go from expecting one every 50 weeks to one every 25 weeks. Now, if we can get uh, Scott leveled up, who would be the next target because he's getting high in uh, personal accommodations just naturally, you know, and he's an actively used commander who potentially could be used as inspiration as a valuable commander anyways, using our earlier analysis, but he's also naturally getting a lot of personal accommodations, so we're getting close. And I was actually considering leveling him up now, but the final caveat in the strategy I'm about to explain that means we're going to hold off on creating our third passive generator, which would make three blue accommodations every 50 weeks. Still not a lot, or that would be the expected number. Still not a lot, but this strategy applies if you're like me and you're like, okay, I'm probably going to be playing this game for at least another couple of years. In which case, this may, if we can get, you know, five to ten of these guys maxed, then the that could create, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 extra commendations in that period of time. And that makes the difference between going from legendary level two to legendary level three on, you know, five or six other guys that we wouldn't be able to do without employing the strategy. So this is a long-term strategy. If you're not planning on playing the game that long, disregard this point entirely because it's completely non-feasible for you. But if you are planning on playing the game for a while, and you're getting late into the game now where we got a lot of resources and we got these guys who are naturally, I'm not promoting him with blue accommodations again to this level. I've just got a lot of duplicates over the years of Norm Scott. Now he's getting close enough that we can strike with the blue accommodations, make him maxed. And now he will once in a while create his own blue accommodation, which pays for itself. And then eventually we'll get, I want to get as many of these human guys that I'm using, uh, boost it as possible and then we'll go back to promoting some of these event commanders but norm scott i use him he's potentially an inspiration uh these two guys powerful commanders so we're gonna wait till they get some more personal accommodations loaded up then eventually we'll boost them max them out vian strong commander eventually i'd like to get fraser basically anyone that i'm using and especially if they got uh uh you know inspiration potential as well then we want to we want to wait till the time is right. We don't want to overcommit the blue accommodations to them. But once they get naturally high enough, then we're going to let them start producing their own. Um, just one other point I want to make out. Um, let's analyze this German section right here. Because this point is not exactly congruent with the rest of the video. But it is a helpful commander upgrade tip as well. Let's analyze German battleships. If I'm new, if I'm beginning to level up the line like okay i got german battleships american battleships everything needs commander resources i want to pick one german commander for the battleships and try and stick with that okay so our our choice would be celiacs versus hipper 
Um, there's this is how I've always thought about it, and I thought about it from when this time this line came out till now. If you're only going to level one up, which would be the ideal way to do it, Von Hipper would be the way to go because you got the base trait here. The secondary battery range is a huge part of the German battleships, and so we get the inspiration that we want to boost anyways, and we can come up with a good build anyways. Now, I think the optimal experience for the German secondary focus battleships is to have Celiacs on there with Von Hipper inspiring and this doofus over here, but that's beyond the scope. But here's the conundrum with making this build, okay? I got a better German battleship build here with Celiacs maxed and Von Hipper maxed, but I've doubled the resources, right? Did I get double the performance boost from the build? Almost certainly not. Okay, basically we're forced to level up an inspiration very high just to accommodate the main build, which this is a more secondary focused build. It's a better German secondary build, no doubt. But if I have to choose one, and early on when you're getting your toes wet in the game, you do want to make these economic calls to the best of your ability. Analyzing the game as a new player might be difficult, but Von Hipper, better use of it. I get the inspiration I want, and I get a functional German battleship build, which frankly is probably more competitive between the two anyways. So I'd probably recommend, if I'm forced to do just these two, I'd probably recommend Von Hipper in the pilot seat and the inspiration. But here's why I brought this up. Because look at this, I got... Four maxed battleship commanders here. That's resources allocated across the board from all the nations of the Navy. I got guy. I got lines now waiting to be promoted. You know, we got <laughs> Rue and uh, Violet and all these guys that have room to grow. But we've tied up a lot of resources here. So this is technically, this would be considered a major mistake in terms of leveling until very late in the game. Okay, we got a good... We got a functioning German battleship commander, whoever it is, Von Hipper or Celiax, uh, you know, putting two German battleship commander resources worth into them. Costly. Now we got four? Okay, that's a major misallocation from almost everyone's perspective, unless you're really, really deep into the game. Why I did it, as an aside, Hyde, he's kind of a, he's the best German battleship build. If I was ever serious about the line, he's who I'd be running. Uh, Celiax is for the German secondary memes. This is for the German Torp uh, battleships and solid inspiration. And here we just leveled up. This guy's in the inspiration just because we love maximum secondary builds. Compare that, though, to the German destroyers. Some of my colleagues, the guys I talk to play this game, they think Von Spee is the better commander, okay? It's uh, German destroyers, hybrid destroyers. Let's give the boost to the Torps, and that'll just maximize the potential maybe that's true maybe not but from an economic standpoint let's say i'm uh trying to decide how do i want to level this up well von spee let's say we give a slight edge to this guy in terms of the actual commander build the stuff over here inspiration in my opinion worthless okay i don't value this inspiration on this line the german destroyer line nor do i value it on any other it's not a horrible inspiration but i can come up with a million others that i'd want so from that perspective, I don't want him. And we're probably going to put Bay on here anyways, right? Bay's probably going to go on, you know, unless you're bucking the trends, which is cool. The whole point of the commander system is to personalize the experience for your preferences. But you pull the destroyer players out there in the wild, almost all of them are going to recommend Bay. So if they're all leveling Bay up anyways, now we have to decide, is this guy's build that much better to justify doubling the resources going into him? In my opinion, no. And in fact, I prefer Bay. This is, you know, we don't need to focus too much on this build. That You should be doing this analysis when you're trying to decide on your commanders on all your lines. But for me, I like the Bay build better anyways. But let's say I liked it slightly less or roughly the same as Von Spee, but the inspiration, well, I'm going to put that on every destroyer in the game, then Bay all the way. And that's why Bay's leveled up this high. That's why we put the points into him. And that's why when he got that high, you know, he was probably at six, seven, eight personal accommodations. Then we snatched him up. We used all our blue accommodations like we got right now, eight extra blue accommodations. Once he got up to level seven or had seven personal accommodations, boom, leveled him up. Same situation here, but we're not considering boosting Von Spee to a max until he'd have to get about 12 or 13 
duplicates sitting on them before I'd be like, okay, let's go ahead, promote them just to increase our weekly odds of hitting the, the, uh, the blue commendation, which of course is valuable, but it's not eight commendations worth as valuable as me. Whereas Scott, we could make the case. We got him on the light cruisers. We could, it might be an inspiration on one or two lines. I can't remember, but potentially you could use him as an inspiration and he's at the same threshold. So that's kind of the analysis that I like to employ. Hopefully that guy helps you guys hone your thinking. It's a very complicated part of the game and it's kind of dull. <laughs> like I'm, it's probably isn't going to be the best performing video of my career. I understand that, but a lot of you guys are like me where you do like to do deep dives on the commanders. I like to spend a lot of time thinking about it and analyzing what's the best way for me to maximize my approach to my Navy as a whole. So I thought I'd share my approach with you guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And see you later. Peace.